Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Lori here. Do you know the most question that people ask us? Number one is medical insurance in Mexico. Yeah, people want to know, is there free medical insurance down here? They would like to move down here and they're concerned about the medical insurance. And that's an excellent question. And so in this video, we want to answer that for you. So uh, let's get into it. A big question that most people want to know about medical insurance down here. They'd like to move down to Mexico and they would like to know, can they get a Mexican insurance down here? Well, I want to describe two policies that are down here. There's one policy that is for people who work in Mexico. You could be working for the Mexican government. You could be working uh, within the Mexican system here. The next one will be if you are, let's say an expat and you're working here. So say you're a real estate agent, you can get medical insurance down here. Now that is not free. It is a social security type of uh, program. So you pay into it, but you get benefits from it. As an example, you can actually receive a pension down here through the Mexican government and you can get a Mexican insurance down here. So that's part of the program that they have down here. I'm going to explain the cost and also I'm going to explain the levels of care that you can expect to get here. What I ask is for me to create these videos. If you could do me a favor and Lori, if you could make a comment, push the thumbs up button and subscribe. That is our payback. So we know that people are interested in the videos we make and the type of videos you would like to see. If you could do that, I would appreciate it. Now, there is a private healthcare system. This video is not about that. We do have a video where we talk about the private medical services you can purchase down here. Check that video out. Now, looking into the public healthcare system, there's going to be two categories. The first one is the social security category, and those are for people who work here in Mexico. And they are contributing to a social security system that will provide them with a pension and also a medical benefit. Second part is for those that are working in the public sector, meaning by maybe they're a real estate agent, uh, maybe they have their own business set up here, they want a restaurant and that that is going to be a program that they'll qualify for. It's called IMSS. Now it's not free. The cost to do this is based on your age. Take a look at this chart and you can see the cost based on your age. Now this is in pesos. So you can take the number on the right hand side and divide it by 20 and that'll tell you how much it is for US dollar all the way to the right, that is the annual cost in pesos for this medical program. You can see on this chart at the low range, very reasonable. When you get into, let's say you're 80 years old plus, well then you're looking at annually in US dollars about $600. Now let's talk about this. The IMSS hospitals are adequate hospitals, but you need to know that you will need to have somebody come and assist you. So you can expect maybe to sleep there and be able to help out the person that is in the hospital. Maybe they need assistance getting up to go into the bathroom. Maybe it's getting some water. And so they, you need to be there. Somebody needs to be there to assist the patient. Now here is the biggest problem as a retiree and as you get older. If you have any pre-existing conditions, you cannot get that service. You will be denied. You can't even sign up for it. So it works out okay if you don't have any pre-existing conditions. So in other words, if you have high blood pressure, pre-existing condition, they're not going to be able to help you out with your heart, let's say. So if you're in heart medicine and that type of stuff, again, they're not going to uh, allow you to use that system. It's for people who do not have pre-existing conditions. Now this particular IMS program doesn't make it really that popular for people who want to move here 
like I say, and they have pre-existing conditions. So now what we're going to look at another system in the public healthcare system here in Mexico. Now this system is for those that are not covered by the other social security systems. This program is going to be called INSABI. This program is new. It came out in January 2020. This new program has replaced an older program. And so this program here is interesting because it's a lot easier to participate in. INSABI provides free health care and free medication for level one and level two. So now you ask, what is level one? What is level two? And how many levels are there? There's actually three. Level one is pretty basic. You need to go see the doctor. You need some basic medical care. That's level one. Level two is a little more severe medical need. So possibly you uh, maybe got in a motorcycle accident or something like that, and you need to go to the hospital. That'll take care of that. Let's say you, maybe you broke a bone. That'll take care of that. And so it will take care of some of your hospital care. Level three is much more of a higher medical need. This would be something like maybe you have open heart surgery. Maybe you are in the ICU. Very severe types of uh, medical care that you need. Unfortunately, are not covered under INSABI. Level one is, level two is, but level three is not going to cover open heart surgery, uh, kidney uh, transplant, and that type of stuff. In that particular case, you will have to pay for those things. So here's the big question you may ask. How do you join this new system? It's really easy because you don't have to join anything. There's no memberships, there's no applications, or anything like that. You'll head down to the Central Salute in your neighborhood, which is a clinic. It's going to be the health center in your neighborhood, in the village. Now, for level one and level two, you would go there. Also, in level three, if let's say, you know, you were in a severe accident and you could make it, you would go to the clinic there and then they will refer you to a hospital. Now, if you have a major medical care, you're still going to go there because they then will refer you to the next level to a hospital or a regional hospital. Now remember that healthcare center is in Sabi. The other question that you may ask, can foreigners participate in the program in Sabi? And the answer is yes. It's people that are foreigners that either they live here, they have a temporary visa or a permanent visa. But if you come in on a 180 day visa, you still can use the program. They won't deny you that. What you want to remember, if you go to one of the centers, you want to have the proper ID. So if you have your immigration card, so that could be your 180 day tourist card that you got when you first came into the country, either by land or by airplane. You're a temporary resident, so you have that, which is good for four years, or you have your permanent resident visa. So you bring in that little card, that identification. You may want to bring in your passport, especially if you are more of a tourist. Uh, any type of identification, bring it there because they'll want to see that. If you happen to have a birth certificate, again, if you're not a resident or temporary citizen of Mexico, bring that along. Now, obviously, there's a lot of benefits for this, especially that it is free. Like anything, you get what you pay for. So in general here, you're not gonna get the care of the facility that you may be used to if you're from, say, the United States, Canada, something like that. So they're gonna be a little more rundown. The equipment will not be as, as up to date. Uh, like I said earlier, you may have to have somebody, and you are gonna have to have somebody assist you when you're in the hospital and uh, take care of you. You can stay there. Sometimes you actually may have to sleep on the floor, believe it or not because it can get very crowded in these, and a lot of them are dormitory style, so you have maybe 15 people staying in one room. So the standards are not the same, and you just would have to get accustomed to that. Sometimes they'll run out of medicines. They may not have all the healthcare supplies at that time that you're there. One of the things that you can expect 
and you say you go to the clinic and you uh, are going to go there. There could be long, long, long lines. Uh, my recommendation, if you need to go, go very, very early in the morning. In fact, if you could get there before they open, and so this way you can be in the head of the line. So it can be complicated. The other thing I would recommend, if you have somebody that speaks Spanish, that will be very important to bring somebody that can interpret and to uh, explain what you would like to have done. Because most generally, they're not going to speak English. Challenge you could, maybe you need to be in a hospital. They may not be a hospital bed available for you. Remember, this is for all of Mexico. This is for all of their people. You had that first system, which was Social Security. That relieved some of the pressure. But for all the rest of the people, they are using the system down here. It's free for them. It's free for you. So you have to get in line and expect to wait. Now, a lot of people use that system down here. I've talked to expats have used it. And they say, all in all, it was worth it because of the cost. Remember, some people don't have enough money to buy the private insurance because it can get, you know, quite expensive as you get older. So uh, if you can, then you could go in that direction. We personally have not signed up for these programs. We have, and we don't have private insurance. We personally pay out of our pocket. So we both have been in the hospital at different times. And at one point uh, we had one bill and we were, I was in the hospital for seven days and it was like $8,000. And then Lori was in the hospital for four days and it was like $4,000. So it, it, we, we want the private, the private care, you know, not the, uh, the free medical care because the service on the private is first class. I mean, it's, it's just like you would get in the States or Canada. And so we have a tendency of wanting to go in that direction, but not everybody has that choice. So I hope this is clarified to you how you can get free medical insurance down here. And what I would like from you is, hey, ask a comment. Let me know what you think. Are there any other things that I didn't cover in this? And uh, I'll get back with you on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you. Do you know anything about Mexican insurance? Well, of course we do. That's why we make Mexico. <laughs> That's why we make videos about Mexico. So we want to answer that for you. Oh no no Mexican <laughs> Mexican medical insurance. Medical insurance, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now let's do a couple of blue pills. Let's do a couple of blue pills. Here you see, Let's do a couple of blue So we, I don't know, I just do sushi on my way. I don't know how the proper way to do it. So this is the way I do it. <laughs> Can I put my cucumber in? That. Hmm. Put shrimp in here. The rolling part is a harder one. Oh, okay. I won't clean up until five o'clock. Can you be home? Yeah, okay.